Sometimes in Prot, you can select many sounds at once and do the same operation for all of them. So for example, I can convert all of these to stereo as a batch process. But for other operations, like getting the intensity of the sound, I have to click every single one, click the sound, query, get the intensity, and see it show up in the info window. So because I don't want to do that for every single sound, certainly in a 10 list, and most certainly in a list of, say, 300 sounds, I want to script this. Using this script, what it's going to do is ask me to select all the sounds I want to work with. For every one of them, it's going to assign a number to that sound, and it's going to use that number uh, in a loop. Now, for every iteration of the loop, it'll select the sound in order. It's going to get the name of the sound, and then it's going to do some operation. So, for example, getting the intensity and then printing it to the window along with its name. After it goes through the loop, it's going to reselect the sounds uh, so that I know which ones went into the script. So let's see what this looks like to run the script. How many sounds do I want to use? All of them. And as you can see, in the info window, I have the name of the sound and its intensity separated by a tab, and it's all in a nice, neat little table here. Now, getting the intensity might not be the only thing I want to do. Maybe I want to get the intensity, the duration, the sampling rate, maybe even information like the maximum, minimum pitch. And so for everything I want to do, I want to put it in this area right here. So for example, I can get the intensity, but then get the duration. Get total duration. And I'm going to enter a few more things in here. So for example here, I have it getting the intensity, the duration, the sampling rate, the maximum, and the time of the maximum, and then it's printing out all of these values to different degrees of decimal specificity with a tab in between. So that line goes on pretty long. When I run this script, I can select all those sounds, and you can see all the values being spit out. And so this is a pretty good way of obtaining a lot of information in a table. You'll see though that um, now that I can see all the numbers, I maybe can lose track of which one corresponds to which. So before I write that table, what I'm going to do is print a header row. I'm going to print name, tab, and so on, so that this can serve as a header. Now when I run the script, select all my sounds, I have a little hetero to tell me what those numbers correspond to. Now suppose I want to do something more complicated than just get this basic descriptive information. Suppose I want to do something custom. Suppose I want to take the sound and get information about the pitch. I can analyze the periodicity, make a pitch object using some default parameters, and then query that object, such as getting the minimum pitch, there it is. I can get the maximum pitch. There it is. And I can get the time of the maximum pitch. And maybe some other things like, I don't know, the standard deviation. Why not? So one of the neat features in Prot is I can paste the history of what I just did. There I go. And so the select object is already part of the script. So I'm going to remove that part. But all the other things are pretty useful. Unfortunately, as they stand, they're just doing the operation and not storing the value. So what I need to do is actually store these as variables. The first one I'm going to call pitch. The next one I'm going to call min pitch. Then max pitch. Time max. And then pitch SD. And I've updated what I'm printing, as well as updating the header row. So when I run this on all my sounds, I get some information about the pitch, the minimum, maximum, maximum time, standard deviation. But I also get some extra objects in the list, uh, a pitch object that corresponds to every single uh, sound I processed. So what I forgot to do within this loop is select pitch. Uh, which is the object I created when I made that, and then hit remove. Another way of writing this would be to say select pitch that corresponds to that name. So now when I run this script, select all my sounds, it'll run cleanly, produce my table of results, and it won't produce any extra objects that 
lie around in the list. Now suppose I want to do something much more complicated, take each sound, change the pitch contour, turn it into a stereo sound, and also lengthen the duration. What I need to do is that whole process manually first, but just once. So I'm going to select one of those sounds. Let's take the word moon. I'm going to take a manipulation object with some default parameters. I'm going to extract the pitch tier. Okay. I'm going to modify that pitch tier with a formula that says self times two. Let's not go so dramatic. Let's say self times 1.7. I'm going to apply that formula. I'm going to impose it back on the manipulation object. I'm going to take that manipulation object, get the resynthesis of it. Now I'm going to rename this because it has the same name as the original one. So while it's selected, I'm going to rename this moon high pitch. And I'm going to lengthen this sound. So I'm going to go to convert, lengthen. And I'm going to lengthen it by a factor of 1.5. And I'm going to rename this again, Moon High Pitch Long. So let's hear what that sounds like. Moon. So kind of funny, but maybe that's what I want. So now that I've done this, I want to make sure that I can clean up all those intermediate objects. So I'm going to select the manipulation, the pitch tier, and that intermediate sound and remove them. So now all I have left is the name of that original sound, high pitch, and long. And the other thing I wanted to do is turn this into a stereo sound. So let's select that, convert it to stereo, and now I can get rid of that other sound right there. So now that I've done everything I need to do to that sound, I'm going to go back to the script, I'm going to go to edit, paste the history, and now I'm going to work through what I need to keep and what I can get rid of here. So I can get rid of the selection of the object, I can get rid of the play because I don't want it to play every time. And the other thing I want to do is replace where it says moon with this variable name. So let's do that here. Okay, there we go. And the other thing I want to change is just the order of some of these operations, only because, you know, it looks a little sloppy to do some removal and then some removal later. So I'm going to move this part up. That way, I can keep track of what's going on here. I'm going to replace this pitch here. I'm going to annotate that as update the pitch contour. Okay, and then this is going to be the length in the sound. And this is going to be the part where we convert it to stereo. Now when I do this removal of the objects, I'm just going to do it once, just because it makes for some cleaner code. Okay, so now that I have this script, it looks like it should work, and if I run it on all my sounds, now I have the original version and also the lengthened version. And if we listen to these back to back, cash, cash. now I have the alternate version of those sounds. So users of Pratt will realize that now that I've created these sounds, it doesn't mean that they actually exist in, a, in an accessible form on the computer. So to save all of them, I have to go through another process of clicking, clicking, saving, and choosing the folder where I want to save it. So we want to do a very similar procedure of selecting all these sounds and saving them all to one folder, which is what we'll do in the next video.